Aloha. It's Wednesday, June the 10th. It's 11 o'clock. That could be only one thing, Trump week. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And this week, like last week and the week before last week, we have a whole list of things. I know we're not going to have enough time to get through. Uh, some items that uh, we've been on the national news discussing. Everyone's seen it. Um, but I'm going to start right in with our guests. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Cynthia Sinclair and Stephanie Dalton. Unfortunately, Winston couldn't make it this morning. I'm going to jump right in with uh, Cynthia. I'm going to jump in with you. And this item's called Jaw Dropping Moments This Week. Uh, I'm going to start off with the most jaw dropping moment, I thought, or the most obtuse uh, moment that I saw Donald Trump engaged with. And that is the comments he made about George Floyd. And uh, he said the following. Hopefully, George is looking down and saying, it's a great thing that's happening for our country. It's a great day for him. It's a great day for everybody. This is a great day in terms of equality. Uh, this, is, this is a less than a week or week and a half away from the fact that we all witnessed a murder on the streets uh, in Minneapolis where a, a, man, a, a police officer's knee basically choked the life out of George Floyd. And no sooner than a week and a half later, George, excuse me, Donald Trump is boasting about how happy George Floyd is to see what's going on. Uh, Cynthia, am I missing something on this? No, you're not missing anything. And you know, Kamala Harris came out with a comment afterwards. I was outraged. I think a million people were outraged when he said that. How dare he? have the audacity to say something like that after the man is dead. Yeah, he's having a great day, he's dead. Was this putting fuel on the fire? Was this trying to inflame even further, um, either cause more violence and property damage from the protesters? Or what was the, what, is this is something that popped in his brain and he said it or was this planned? Well, he was reading from a script. So I think he was, it was planned. They wrote it into the script. And I think what they were trying to do was say, look at all the great things that have happened because of his death. And I think that's sort of where they were trying to go with it, but they certainly missed the mark. And when Kamala Harris came out, she said, keep George Floyd's mouth, I mean, keep George Floyd out of your mouth until you can say Black Lives Matter. And that's what she, that was her response to the president. So I asked this question almost every week. Um, and the answer is usually the same, but I'm going to ask it again. Does this help Donald Trump with his base and the independents by making comments like this? Does this uh, substantiate and, and, and kind of rekindle the racism that has a, a good part of his population that follow him? Uh, does that help? I believe so, yes, absolutely. Because it minimizes his death. And so it minimizes the reason behind the protests. And at least that's what I think anyway. Okay, well, good point. Uh, Stephanie, I'm going to bring out jaw-dropping uh, comment number two, and that was just recently where uh, we all saw in Buffalo, New York, where a 75-year-old senior, and he's, he's well-known in the protest circle, but he uh, walked up to a policeman and he was shoved, rather, um, rather, I thought it was rather a brisk shove, and he fell back, and then he tripped on his heels, and he, he went down to the pavement, and basically... Um, his head hit the pavement and we all saw that that take place we all saw that there was blood coming out of this gentleman's ear and basically he he went unconscious and here's what donald trump said in a tweet he said uh, the buffalo protester shoved by police by antifa he he he, he labeled the guy as antifa a provocateur 75 years old um he fell harder than he was pushed. Could be a setup. So, Stephanie, uh, here we have Donald Trump, who I know where he got this information from. He got it off a conspiracy website and that was later picked up by um, One America News. And, of course, he watches that a lot. He likes it because they're truly dedicated to whatever Trump says and does versus, you know, Fox isn't always reporting what he wants them to report. So uh, Fox sometimes is, you know, not his favorite list of news shows, but One American News it now is, and they picked this directly up from a, um, the Treehouse blog, which is an ultra conservative uh, right-wing conspiracy theory uh, blog site. 
uh, that's where our president's getting his information from. So that resulted in this this tweet of his. What were you? What are your thoughts about this? Well, I like that uh, that um, Cynthia said uh, minimizing uh, because it's just so utterly disrespectful um, of anybody. And uh, I think I saw it. Um, I saw it early. I, I'm sure it wasn't. Uh, before anybody else saw it or when it happened because we're here, right? We're many hours uh, later. But um, I saw that happen. And then I saw maybe the guy after one or two went by that actually turned and reached over and started to bend down and was drawn back. And I, I understand that that's been acknowledged now. They Somebody has studied this tape to look at the, the sequence of events. And uh, this was a 75 year old, um, clearly. And obviously balance is not a strength at that time. So he was easy to um, you know, tip on his own recognizance, much less whether anybody pushed him. I don't know that they did, but it, it, it's just that um, Donald Trump is un, um, un, <laughs> just unattentive to anybody's existence other than his own. It well, was but what he's doing is he's, he's launching into yet another conspiracy theory uh, again um, about this. And again, I, I, I agree with Cynthia, he's minimizing the, you know, the, the horrific moment we saw and witnessed on, on TV. He's minimized that by trying to throw in a conspiracy theory and to say that this whole thing was staged um, I don't think bloody, blood running out of a gentleman's ear is a staged event. I just that, don't think so. And he's been in the hospital for well over a week. He was hurt. He was hurt. It was very scary. And it went through my mind. Oh, my gosh. Are we going to now have this white uh, elderly man uh, issue arise? I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, in, it's being attended to. But many questions ran through my mind. But, but well, aren't we getting bored with this whole conspiracy thing it is the same thing over and over so well that's a good that's a really good point and you know when the gop senators are approached by by reporters um specifically about this event where the, you know the 75 year old gentleman was pushed down uh if you watch their responses it looks like they were all um in a hypnotic daze uh they they all they all claimed oh i never saw it i never saw the tweet I, I never saw the video. I have no idea what you're talking about. Senator after senator after senator basically shuffled along the corridor with their hands in their pocket going, uh, I don't know. Well, if they don't know, what the heck are they doing in Congress? Well, I think that this, the commentators on CNN talked about that they're not engaging it. And this is just a continuance of the established behavior, primarily to keep Trump off their butt. Uh, with uh, with the tweets and to ruin their chances of re-election. They're just holding firm to get- They're Holding on to whatever they can hold on to. Yeah, that good is, point. It's, it's, un, it's irresponsible to do that. They're not fulfilling their role to represent us. And so I don't know how many of them are going home to hear what the people want, but this is not representation of Americans and it's certainly no reflection of our values. And. Right. Also, Lindsey Graham has been very, very quiet. There are issues like, you know, so why are they doing this? Uh, do they think this that they can get through this and come out whole on the other side? I think that is our question. Are we going to forgive all this and go on and forget it when we, we move on? Okay. Well, I think that is the, the plan and the strategy is that you will forget it because there's been so much of this yes. uh, for the last three and a half years that you can't quite remember it all unless someone summarizes it and you you read it on someone's news newsletter or or in the newspaper of all the things that Donald Trump has done in the last three and a half years because you can't remember it all. It's too much. It's a good point. Yeah. So anyway, I, I agree. Uh, in any way, he, what he says is minimizing the issue for the people experiencing it and maximizing the value of that issue for Donald Trump's purposes. So yeah. that's what's going on. That's the formula he's working and he's very expert at doing that. So he's yeah. definitely a PR guy. Okay, uh, Stephanie, thank you for your comments on this. I wanna bounce back to you, Cynthia, on the same topic. What were your, um, what were your observations and, and to what degree does Donald Trump get away of trying to create a conspiracy and that this guy was an Antifa set up and it was all staged and planned. 
Uh, and then also comment a little bit about your observations about the GOP senators as they're being asked by reporters what, what they thought of the whole uh, tweet from Donald Trump on this specific issue. Right. Well, <clears throat> you know, I heard a friend of uh, the man who was injured. I, I heard a friend of his being interviewed on TV this morning who just talked about what a Christian peace loving guy this guy was and what they what the story goes anyway that's come out is that he was trying to return a cop's helmet that he had found on the ground and that's why he had walked over to them oh. right I saw it live i happened to be watching the tv that day and so i saw it live as it happened and the man fell and the blood instantly came pouring out from the back of his head and then started pouring out of his ear and there was two um officers the one on the left is the one who shoved him. And the officer on the right is the one who bent down to try to help him. And it looked like maybe it was a, a supervisor or something right behind him who pushed him away, said, keep going, keep going. And he started to call it in and right. started to call for the medics. So it's not like they didn't do anything, but it was just- So did it appear to be staged to you? Oh, goodness, no. Absolutely. Oh, goodness, no. I think, I think most of America thought Okay, this is not staged. There's no way it's staged. It was so if you're a GOP, if you're a GOP senator and you know what you saw, you you know what you've been watching on TV, you know what Donald Trump tweeted, yet you're not going to acknowledge it. What's the optics of that for for those that are not totally committed to Donald Trump? What are the optics to, on that? Well, it just shows that they are totally, you know, sycophants that just play to Trump. And that's all they ever do. And that's why they wouldn't speak about it. But Lisa Murkowski, we have a little bit of a difference. She's kind of starting to, to um, call things for being wrong. Um, she called this for being wrong. She called Trump for being wrong on this one. So who knows, maybe she'll come around. But she's done this in the past, too, where she puts out this front like, yeah, I don't agree with all that. But then she ends up voting with all the Republicans. They call that straddling the fence. Um, it's yeah, been seen and done for the last three and a half years, not only by her, but a few other senators. Okay, I'm going to jump on to the title of the show, and that is Trump, Law and Order President. Okay, as we know, he, um, he's come out at the Rose Garden just, be just after they cleared uh, by St. John's Church. He cleared him out with tear gas, rubber bullets, mounted police, National Guard, uh, and, and he quoted that he's a friend of the protesters, and he's going to still be the law and order president. Well, guess what? Um, this week, a lot of generals and a lot of them that were former uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff came out and said, not so fast, not so fast. Specifically, let me just cite some of them. Colin Powell, we know who he is. Martin Dempsey, Mike Mullen, Richard Myers, Michael Hayden, of course, General James Mattis, uh, he came out very strongly. He's former uh, chief of staff for Donald Trump. And um, even the current secretary of defense, Mark Esper, uh, who, who was about ready to resign because he disagreed with the fact that Donald Trump is trying to militarize and use them against protesters and certainly many pre peaceful protesters. Your thoughts about all the generals coming out? Well, I was really glad to see that. I think General Kelly came out too. His most recent chief of staff came out and said it was wrong. So across yeah, the- Yeah, add, add his name to the list. That's correct, he did. Yeah, so there's so many of them that came out against him that I'm hoping that's gonna make a difference because these are all very well-respected generals. These aren't just fly by night, oh, they're Democrats, partisan people. These are hardcore military men you know, who made it to the level of general. And so I think that, you know, we really need to listen to what they have to say. And hopefully his base, or at least the people that are on the fence about it, will listen also. Well, if you're a supporter of Trump and you're a veteran, um, that would catch my attention of all these generals, chiefs of, um, you know, chairman of the chief of staff, multi a multitude of generals coming out and saying the military is used against and for foreign countries, to protect the United States, not to be used against our own citizens. Well, you know, he tried to do the Insurrection Act of 1807 or whatever it was. That's um, what he tried to pull. Yeah, and that's what he tried to pull. But even that was not allowed because nobody would approve it and he can't do it all by himself. Well, he, he did ship them in. 
to Washington, D.C. They came in by truck. Well, they, uh, they were ready to go. They can go to D.C. because they don't have an actual governor, right? Because it's like a territory, right? Yeah. And so it's not governed the exact same way, which is why he could get away with doing it in Washington, but he can't just do it anywhere. Yeah. Um, Stephanie, let me ask you a question. Uh, thank you, C Cynthia. Thank you very much. Stephanie, let me ask you a question. We know that Donald Trump, the last three and a half years, we've seen the pattern of he runs up to a border on something and he pushes the law and he pushes on the Constitution to see where that flexible boundary uh, snaps back or not snap back on him. Is this a case where Donald Trump wanted to see what he could get away with by trying to order in uh, military to quell a, a, a peaceful protest, uh, a citizen's protest? Was this one of his examples of him trying to test the boundaries so that the next time he wants to use it, he'll see how much pushback he gets or doesn't get? I don't think it's testing anything. He's doing what he wants to do. It's the 82nd Airborne people that were waiting uh, uh, outside the District of Columbia's lines. I guess they were in Virginia. Perhaps that's where the most of the uh, airplanes come in. But um, yeah, I think according to Muriel Bowser, this wasn't anything that was legal to do in the in the district which you know she's governor mayor county person everything because of the the circumstances of it but it, it functions as an ordinary city and we we in hawaii ought to be sensitive to it because you know we get pushed into some crazy pacific archipelago distant place in people's minds when we're a real state and and uh but DC's um, not a real state only because it doesn't have a, uh, representatives, but it does everything else that the state does. They pay taxes. <laughs> it definitely pays taxes, you know, so this is the ticket. Anyway, I think that he's doing what he wants to do and he would have done it if he could have. So I'm not getting that it's testing anymore. I, I don't know that he ever tested. He's just like a bully. He just goes forward and somehow he's impeded by circumstances or somebody grabbing him. I mean, so what, what he did was out, outrageous and an insult, uh, according to Muriel Bowser. She's the one that fought this back. I mean, her, her mayorship is now a real tough gig because she's had to get on the phone with him. She's been up front with him face to face. And remember, there were some consequences of this. She painted a bunch of stuff going down to the street to the White House that isn't real pleasing to Mr. You Trump. You mean Black Lives Matter? That yellow, yellow demarcation on the streets? <laughs> and she confiscated the Lafayette Park. That is now called not the French general that helped us, who was really helpful and probably saved our grits. But anyway, it's not <laughs> Black Lives Matter Park. So um, I, I think this woman is stepping out. It's interesting, nobody, I don't know if there's gonna be an impact or an effect of this, but she's looking very strong and in uh, an, a suitable manner. Uh, she, you know, she's, she's not making a big deal out of it, but she's saying it authoritatively and out of the base of power she has. Well, I, I brought up my question for a reason, because there's a lot of folks, uh, and I'm not going to quantify exactly who's who. I, Bill Maher comes to mind, and there's a lot of people that believe that Donald Trump's not going to leave the White House if he, even if he's not reelected. And so the question is, is this a run-up test to see well, I'm not leaving and I'm going to use the military to make sure I don't have to leave. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I, I, I mean, Bill Martin is absolutely serious about it. And um, he was t he was talked down from it by one of his guests. I, I, I can't. I think it was the I mean, Michael Moore tried to talk him off the ledge on that one, too. But, um, <laughs> you know, but there it's, it's 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 something that a lot of people actually scratch their head about and go, would he try to pull that? Oh, he'll pull a lot of stuff. He that that one could be, but he'll he'll just barrage everybody with everything that was wrong with the election. And, and in the meantime, get running up to hit. He's trying to do everything to in, interfere with the Georgia problems and the Wisconsin problems. And oh God, don't do mail because you know that is that's a fraud. Yeah, uh, Cynthia, excuse me, uh, no, uh, Stephanie. Committed a lot of fraud as a Republican person, but anyway, okay. Right. Uh, Cynthia, you know, I've listened to you for quite a while now, well over a year and a half, and you're concerned that Donald Trump's going to try to pull, pull a shenanigans on the election. And, you know, he kind of showed his hand about uh, the mail-in ballots and how fraudulent they are going to be. And um, basically, is he, you know, setting the stage for 
potential violence in the street if the election doesn't go his way. And he starts calling it fraud. And I've been cheated out of my re-election as president of the United States. Um, does it concern you that he does use the military or the uh, Insurrection Act of 1807 as a test case or as a, maybe a warm up? Does that come into your mind? Because I know, like I said, it, uh, it, it's been in the mind of Bill Maher and a bunch of other Americans that are concerned about this. It's been in my mind just because I know the man and the way he is, you know, so, and then, yeah, Bill Maher, Trevor Noah, there's a lot of people talking about it. And think about it. Um, Michael is, this Cohen, is this comedy or is this serious? Well, Michael Cohen was not joking when he said it, you know, to the Congress, he said it, that he's not going to go peacefully. He's not going to leave peacefully. So there's a couple of things that I think are important to think about here. And one of them is that the when Ivanka Trump went over to China and got all those patents, she got patents for election machines, voting machines, right? So where'd they go? Where have they been placed? Do they get placed in Georgia? Do they, and are they placed in the ones where right now the reason some, you know, um, districts in Georgia don't have any wait at all or an hour. And some have, you know, six and seven hour waits. So is that by design or is that by accident? Um, I, will, I have a lot of questions and I don't understand why a media, we don't have some New York Times, you know, editors or journalists going out there and researching this and finding out. I haven't been able to find out much as to where they went. But we do know that this new Dominion uh, voting machines company is kind of a small company. There's not a lot you can find out about it. So as I was trying to find out more about where did her machines go and just exactly what's going on. So I kind of think that the reason he's against voting by mail is it's not as easy for him to cheat. There'll be a paper ballot. So okay. maybe, you know, I don't know, compromise and have, like we do here in Hawaii, you have a paper ballot and, you know, an electronic thing, but it's a paper ballot. So I wish every state had paper ballots. That'd be my yeah. way. All righty. I'm going to switch gears here uh, mm -hmm. while I have you here, Cynthia. Um, Roger Goodell from the NFL has reversed a long policy of, um, you know, not really endorsing, taking a knee. And he has reversed himself explicitly on that point and apologized saying, I wish we would have listened to our, our team members, our, our players, and has apologized profusely about it. Um, then, of course, Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump had words to say about that. But this kind of sparked up from Drew Brees, who's the quarterback for the um, New Orleans. And he said the following, I realize this is not an issue about the American flag. We can no longer use the flag to turn people away or distract them from the real issues that face our black communities. Donald Trump then immediately quoted or tweeted, old glory is to be revered, cherished and flown high. We should be standing up straight and tall, ideally with a salute or a hand on heart. There are other things you can protest, but not over the great American flag, no kneelings. So Donald Trump, once again, gets to wrap himself up in the American flag, completely change the narrative about um, what it is and why um, Kaepernick took the knee, you know, a year and a half ago. Why he did that in the first place was to protest the brutality of some police forces against the black community. Mm -hmm. um, your thoughts? Well, I'm glad that he has been exonerated because he needed to be. And what well, he, Roger what, Goodell didn't say his name specifically. No, he didn't, but I think he should have. And there's a lot of talk of even giving him a tryout to see if he can. I saw him being um, interviewed. Goodell was being interviewed. And he said, well, I think he's been out of, you know, play for too long. And Bob is kind of trying to hedge on it. But there's some other teams that have talked about giving him another chance and taking off the thing because he was blackballed forever. And so now they're going to maybe give him another chance to play, which I think is right. But, you know, I lived in the South for a long time. So all these people that are so pro-flag, don't you dare disrespect the flag, you know. Now, if they go to a sports arena, they will stand for the national anthem. But right around all that time that all this was happening, I was out there visiting. And I was in a restaurant, a sports bar, 
and the national anthem came on. I stood up. Not one single other person stood up. So I got on the, they have a little microphone there at this place. I got on the microphone and I gave them all a bad time for not standing up. You know, you want to claim that it's wrong for someone to kneel, yet you'll sit here and you will keep on eating and keep on making noise while anthem's Well, they don't want to spill any mustard or Coca-Cola on their pants. What can I say? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) All right. Stephanie, your thoughts on the NFL reversal, uh, Roger Roger Goodell and his statements, and then Donald Trump's uh, desperate attempt to reignite this issue and call it all about disrespect to the American flag. You know, it just raises it up to that level of incitement um, and uh, onto another distraction, which is certainly there's going to be a move to remo- to stop playing the national anthem at sports events. So they brought that up and that that then I started thinking, well, why, you know, why do we do that? So maybe there'll be a discussion about why are we even uh, using it at sports events. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that's a whole nother pathway we're going down here. Well, part of that is because the, the U S military got a contract with the NFL to start broadcasting their recruitment commercials during uh, breaks in play. And, uh, that was never the case before. And only until the recent years did the U S military get an entryway. And I'm sure they're paying very well to the NFL for it, uh, to broadcast the commercials and basically pump up patriotism to equal football. Yeah. Well, I I mean, I think this is open now. So we're going to be hearing a lot more about this. And I I would say perhaps that uh, event is in jeopardy. But um, it it is a place for people to to do what what Kaepernick did. And he's been so punished for that. And it has never been clear enough why they were punishing him so badly. But now I see the sacred ground of the flag and then the using of that to distract and to incite and to do conspiracy and to have all of these other things going on. It is, that is what is, is the, the game here. And I wish we, well, I mean, hopefully we can get through this without getting bogged down in it and without changing our cherished uh, tr- you know, practices and what we right. want. Okay, but, we got less than a minute left. So Stephanie, what is, what is go the, ahead. What the problem of two questions, I want the worry about how to get him out of the White House, okay? I want that problem so much. So, well, the problem be answered by get everyone you know to register and vote. That's the answer. Okay. We're down to seconds here. What's your prediction for next for the coming week? What's what do you think's on the horizon here? And I'll a short answer, please, and I'll ask Cynthia too. Oh, for me, what's coming? Yeah. Well, I, I think we're going somewhere um, on the national anthem, okay? And that will be more and more opportunity. In addition to that, um, I've started watching uh, all of the shows because I, I don't want to get just stuck with a certain line of shows. But I noticed on the ones I had been watching, even the CNN, I think. But they're playing uh, Trump commercials, okay, for president. And one of the, the, the ways it comes across, they're beautifully done, and you would have no notion that there were any issues. Yeah, I agree. Okay, what? Cynthia, I got, a, I got a cut from you, Stephanie. Cynthia, your last quick thoughts about what's coming up this week. Oh, gosh. Um, the COVID stuff is going to come back. We've had all these, you know... Uh, we just opened up, so we're going to see rises from that, and then we're going to also see rises from these protests. And so I'm going to be curious to find out how long these protests will go. What is it, 15 days or something they've been going every day straight? So I, I'll be anxious to see where they go from here. All right. Cynthia, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us on Trump Week. Stephanie Dalton, thank you so much for your comments. They're always great ones. I want to say thank you. We'll see you next Wednesday. I'm Tim Apichel, the host for Trump Week. Wednesday, 11 o'clock, Trump Week. Aloha.